I have adored the mailman. He, though not my employer, was my supervisor. My delicacy. I asked him if I may grow the garden. He brought me seed and tools. When I paved the way for his caravan, he always smiled to me. Many years ago, in my garden, I installed a microphone. I often speak with the fleeing travelers and loitering jumpers, but my memory has slowed and dulled with the wrinkling of my skin. I needed aid to remember. I added transcribing to my nightly routine. It was not very long after the garden's installation. The mile man had the hardest job. He did so well. He transported so many who kicked and screamed against the beauty of the infinite exit. I hope he knows he was appreciated. A couple years ago, I planted cameras in my garden too. I added watching to my Saturday routine. I have been much happier avoiding the city. Instead, I look at the pictures on my wall. The mile man worked this interstate forever. He always knew what the beyond had in store. I wondered, worried, which journey down I infinity would be his last. I watched the horizon anxious for his caravan. He always came back. I never suspected his last trip would be a return visit. Infinity learned that the mile man had not been emptying certain seats on his caravan. The mile man had been amassing followers, worshippers, travelers who had a love for the end, or an unsatisfied finale, or a seed of evil. Why did he not ask me? Everything changed. My love, my devotion, the structure of the end of the world. When infinity came in Heavenly Father's chariot. The garden needed tending. I tended it. I do not always catch the caravan on the horizon, and the mile man and his empty vehicle waited on the bridge I build. The road was laid half. The mile man pulled in. I felt jealous. Someone sat in his passenger seat. I only noticed the death of the engine as the chariot halted itself behind the caravan. My gawking alerted the mile man. I could not help but stare, for infinity is breathtaking. Infinity is the most gorgeous creation of the beyond. I could not have known the word beautiful before I met infinity. I felt I needed to bow, so where I stood, I did. Her eyes are large. Her iris and pupil fused a solid blue. Her sleek black hair is pulled tight to her scalp by a cloud. Studded infinity signs pierce her ears, and along her lacrimal are tattoos of the same sign. Her lips, plump and painted, or maybe even naturally, blue. Her eyelids and cheeks sparkled, radiated. Her shirt, a heart shape of sparkly blue, revealed her ribs and back, perfectly shaped, perfectly muscular. Perfect, impossible to describe. Her wrists adorned with bracelets, the back of her hoop skirt covered in clouds. The front was only the wooden cage revealing her shirt a leotard. Blue ballet slippers laced to her knee, her visible thighs tattooed. A snake curled around one, and the mile infinity sign on the other. I, I, I think I ramble. But I want to record all of her. There are not enough words to describe her in a moment of emotion. To see her smile. Oh, oh my. The mile man exited his vehicle with a cordial bow. An arm across his torso. He, a man who I admired, was nothing compared to her. He approached her as an equal. Her arms were crossed. Good day, Infinity. Do the roses bloom today? Oh, my most loyal, must you make me cross this bridge? You yourself made forever temporary. 
neither expected eternity for me to be on I infinity. Infinity slid open the caravan door. Inside sat three creatures, more color than person. This is not progression. They are revolting. Do not be so harsh. They were once your children. I did not give you your gift to be used for tragedy. Listen, you cannot expect me to walk among gods and not fester with ambition. He pushed her feet a few steps and her against the caravan's walls. I wanted to see what they could do to each other. I ached to know how her perfect physicality and his gorgeous hands could work against each other. What pent-up passions they held. I ached to know now how prior touches had been received. Patience would give you more, forever progressed. Forever is a babysitter. And you will be nothing. Infinity pushed him away. Return down the beyond. You shan't make me. The mile man returned to the van. He removed a trinket. He commanded his worshippers. They are barely corporeal, and soon I will fall the same. Goodbye, Infinity. Enjoy what you have thieved from me. Oh, I will, my Heavenly Mother. I do hate it when you call me so. We are equals. We always had been. And now? Now, it is not so. So you are everything, and I am nothing. From now on, that is all you will ever be. He kissed her. She cut her hand. She smeared her blood across his face. On foot, nothing and his worshippers walked into the world. I wonder what's to come. As Infinity watched his departure, stolid and cross, I looked to my garden. I had considered it beautiful, but even the most beautiful rose could not come close to her. I picked the most appealing fruit I could find, a pear, and as she felt her loss, I proffered it to her. I gave her my condolences and offered her respite. She must have been very overcome by the mild man's departure, for her offered smile was small. Infinity said to me, Thank you, gentle caretaker. I regret what you just witnessed. The kindest creature ate of my fruit. I stared after her chariot with the core in my palm, the seeds of which I planted. So fair a creature aware of me. So perfect a person smiled at me. I, I barely folded the road before my time to leave. I hope the pear tree takes an eternity of her gratitude in my garden. I have combed the footage, slowed it, sped it, cherished it. I cannot unsee her. What if infinity chose me?